A custom greeting card is a great way to add a personal touch to a message to friends or family. CorelDRAW has all the tools you need to design any style of card you want, plus a selection of greeting card templates to help you get started. In this video, we'll learn how to make a simple top-fold birthday card, including a background design, photo frame, and personalized messages. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample design file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along. We're starting with the sample file, a two-page US letter-sized document. Page one is the back and front of the card, page two is the inside. Both pages have text and a horizontal guideline indicating the fold. These can be hidden by using the Objects Docker or Objects Inspector for Mac users by clicking the Visibility icon for the Layout Guide layer on each page. I'll also enable View Alignment Guides so that it will be easier later to align and position objects. If this option is grayed out for you, your snaps are likely turned off. Disable Snap Off first, then turn on Alignment Guides. In order to refer to the guidelines while creating objects, I'll choose View, Snap To, and make sure Guidelines is enabled. Now let's start adding some elements for the outside front of the card. My design will fill the bottom half of page one, and I'll stick with this landscape orientation so that the card can be placed on a surface using a horizontal fold line. In the Objects Docker, I'll click Layer 1 on Page 1 to make it active, so that objects I create will go on this layer. I'll be using a cute dog photo, but you can use any photo you like. I'll choose File, Import, Find My Image File, and click and drag to place it in the drawing window, outside the page, at about the right size. The image will be moved into a frame later. To create the background, I'll double-click the Rectangle tool. This creates a rectangle with the same size as the page. But I only want to cover the front of the card, so I'll drag the top edge down to the guideline. In the property bar, I can verify that the rectangle height is now half of what it was before, and I can always use these fields to enter exact values. For a solid fill, I can click a swatch in the color palette. Or I can use the color eyedropper tool, click to sample a color from the photo, and click in the rectangle to fill it with this color instead. If I want to give this rectangle an outline, I'll activate the Pick tool to select it, and increase the Outline Width in the property bar. I can also choose the line style, and set the outline color by right-clicking on a color swatch. On the Mac, I would right-click on a swatch and choose Set Outline Color. But I prefer No Outline, so I'll right-click the No Color swatch. I could also just set the outline width to None. It's easy to create a pattern for a more interesting background. I'll activate the Transparency tool, choose a Vector Pattern Transparency on the property bar, and open the Transparency Picker to see the list of patterns. You may only have a few patterns on your list if only the Starter Pack is installed, but you can easily find more content by clicking Get More. When I filter by My Library, I can see the free Vector Fills bundle I already have installed. You can find this bundle by filtering by vectors and sorting by price low to high. The free bundle isn't listed for me here since I already installed it. Choose the bundle you want, and for a free bundle, this button would say Install. Back to the pattern list, I can use the slider to increase the size of the pattern thumbnails. I'll filter my options to the Decorative category and select this fill, which applies the pattern to the fill color. I can adjust transparency of the pattern foreground and background, and use the circular handle for proportional rotating and resizing, or the square handles to skew the pattern. If I plan to use this fill again, I can open the list again, right-click the pattern in use, and choose Favorite. So next time, when I filter by favorites, I can easily access this pattern. Next, I'll right-click on the rectangle and select Lock. This will prevent the background from being accidentally moved or altered when working later on other parts of the design. I can create a simple frame using any shape tool, such as rectangle or ellipse, 
or polygon in my example. I'll set the number of sides to 15 and click and drag while pressing the Control key or Command on the Mac for proportional sizing. I'll move and resize the polygon so that part of it overlaps with the card. To give this polygon more dimension, I'll activate the Shape tool and drag one of the inner nodes inward. This reshapes all inner nodes at once. To make the polygon even more interesting, with an inner node still selected, I'll click Convert to Curve on the property bar. This change is made to all inner nodes. I'll do the same for an outer node and also make it symmetrical. Now I can make any inner node symmetrical as well and adjust arrows on the control handles. Now I want to trim the part of the polygon that extends past the page borders. The first step is to switch back to the pick tool, right click on the background rectangle and unlock it. With the rectangle still selected, I'll hold shift and select the polygon as well. Clicking Intersect on the property bar creates a new curve where the two objects intersect. I don't need the original polygon anymore and could delete it, but just in case I might need it again, I'll right-click on it and choose Hide. I'll now right-click on my imported photo and choose Power Clip Inside. My cursor is now an arrow, and when I click on the intersection curve, the photo is placed inside. The photo isn't in the right spot though, so I'll click Edit on the Power Clip toolbar, use the Pick tool to move the photo and resize it a bit, then click Finish. I could keep the border around the photo by increasing the outline width on the property bar and right-clicking on a swatch to set the outline color. But I think the frame looks better with no border, so I'll change the outline width to none. Now for the birthday greeting. I'll click the text tool, click to start the text, and type my message, including line breaks. This is called artistic text, as opposed to paragraph text, which I'll use later. With the text selected, I'll choose a font from the property bar and increase the font size. Switching to the pick tool, I can move and resize. With the text still selected, I'll press Ctrl K or Command K on the Mac to break the text apart. Now each line is a separate object and I can change each line separately and assign a fill to the birthday line. With this word still selected, I'll press Ctrl K again to break the word into its individual characters and make the first letter larger. Because alignment guides are turned on, it's easy to space lines evenly. I'll now select the birthday characters and activate the Painterly Brush tool, which is great for adding effects. I'll choose the Glow Brush from the Digital Effects category, and on the property bar I'll adjust brush size and transparency. Right-clicking a color swatch changes the color of the glow effect. The inside can be left blank if you prefer to handwrite a message, or you can add a message to your design. I'm opening page 2, and I'll make sure its layer 1 is active. I'll use the text tool again, and because I'm writing a couple of lines, I'll click and drag to create a text box, which means I'll be creating paragraph text. Now I'll type my message with a line break, select the text and change its font and size, and choose Center Alignment. Switching to the Pick tool, I can adjust the text box size, which adjusts the text lines, then choose Object, Align and Distribute, Center to Page Horizontally. I'll use the up or down arrows to nudge the text vertically, leaving enough space for a signature. For another personal touch, I'll add another text object to indicate who made the card. This will be back on page 1, where I'll add a line of artistic text on the top half of the page. This is what will appear on the back outside of the card. After switching to the Pick tool, centering the text horizontally on the page, and nudging it up a bit, I'll flip the text by entering 180 for the angle of rotation. When the card is folded and placed on a surface, this text will appear right side up. I'll use File Save As to save my design in CDR format in case I want to make edits later or use the same design for another card. If you plan to print at home, print a blank test page first so you can check the layout and confirm how your printer handles double-sided documents. If you're using a print service, 
you will likely need to export your card as a PDF or JPEG file. Check the specifications of your print service first. To export your file, go to File Export and select PDF, JPG, or another file format specified by your print service. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating a greeting card in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page. Here you can download the sample design file and a written version of this tutorial to follow along.